Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I hope everyone is doing great out there. On today's video, I wanted to show you uh, how to work with Film Pack inside of Photolab 4. Now, a couple videos back, I showed you the actual app of Film Pack. Actually, it's called Film Pack 5. But today I thought I want to show you how you can really take advantage of Film Pack inside of Photolab 4. And that's what this video is about today. And then don't forget there's a holiday season offer going on right now up till December 31st, 1159 CET. And then the offer is up to 30% off all DxO software. So that's Film Pack, uh, that's Viewpoint 3, that's Photo Lab 4 and the Nick Collection, so up to 30% off. Just want to let you know, just click on my affiliate links in the description below and it'll take you to those offers. All right, enough of that advertisement stuff. Let's get started. Okay, so here I am in a Photo Lab 4. And by the way, I'm using a workspace called the DxO Advanced Workspace. That's the one that I recommend that you use. It's got pretty much all the different uh, tools you're going to need. Now, there's tons of tools in... Uh, photo lab for and you can really customize it i'll do some videos on how to customize it but for now i want to show you film pack inside of uh photo lab 4. okay so you can see here's all my different tools here and they're all collapsed right now and if you right click here you can expand all like this or if you right click you can collapse all if you click on this toggle right here it'll just show you the tools that you're using which is really cool i love this new filtering system so these are the adjustments right here that i've used and if I click on the compare, there's the original image and here is after my adjustments. But these are all the different adjustments I use. I'm going to be using Deep Prime. Now, you, noise reduction, you can't see it right now, but you'll, you'd see it once it gets rendered out. It gets rendered out once you uh, export the image. I really love the Deep Prime noise reduction, but one thing I do want to point out so nobody gets confused, it will only work on raw images. It will not work on TIFFs or JPEGs or anything like that, but just raw images, very important. And now let's turn our attention to Film Pack. So let me go ahead and shut this toggle off. And I'm gonna close down my late group here and I'm gonna open up the Film Pack 5 group. Now, if you just click on this group right here, it opens it up. Now you'll notice here I have color rendering, grain, filter, channel mixer, creative vignetting, blur, frame, texture, light leak, everything that's in the uh, Film Pack 5 standalone app. Now I added um, color rendering to this film pack. So normally in this uh, DxO um, advanced workspace, the color rendering won't be there. I put it there because that's very important. It's really a part of DxO film pack. It's also part of regular Photo Lab 4, but all your extra um, film emulations are found in the color rendering. Okay. So to add that, all you need to do is come to this little drop down arrow, click right here, and find color rendering and check that on. It'll put it in this group here. Now, just to set things up for you, I wanna show you, here's my original DNG right here. See this thumbnail here? And next to it, I have uh, virtual copy one and two, and you'll notice you see a little M on this raw file that I've adjusted, okay? This is the original DNG raw file. Now, to make a virtual copy, all you do is right click on the uh, thumbnail and click create virtual copy. You can make as many virtual copies, I think, as you want. If I'm incorrect, please correct me on that, but I think you can make a bunch of virtual copies. And the reason I made two virtual copies is because I wanted to show you a black and white example and a color example using Film Pack 5. Film Pack 5 is the latest version of Film Pack, but you'll notice here they just call it DxO Film Pack. So I'll try to refer to it as Film Pack from this point on. And now for some fun, man, I really love Film Pack because it really helps me to get my creative uh, juices to start to flow. And I love emulating different types of films and things like that. Let's start by going into the Film Pack group here and you'll notice color rendering right here. I'm going to click it and open up color rendering. I'm also going to click grain and open up grain and turn grain on. The reason I'm turning grain on is because whatever rendering I'm using, that grain will apply because you'll notice the category is current color profile. So whenever I change to a different film emulation or, or so on, it will change the grain to, to match that type of film. So that's important to have this uh, grain turned on and set to current color profile. Now, if you don't want to add grain to your images, you can shut that off. You know, because some, some of you guys out there don't like grain. But I think grain is beautiful, especially when you're simulating films. I think it's important to add the actual grain to the film. But you'll notice right now my rendering is on Leica M. Now, I have a Canon 5D, but I rendered it to match a Leica M camera. Now, I think this, color, this camera body category right here 
We have generic renderings. If you click on generic rendering, it'll be the uh, generic rendering for your camera body, okay? But if I click it on camera body, I have all these different camera bodies that I can choose from. Now, I believe this is in the Essentials Edition. I'm not sure because I have the film pack. So if anybody knows the answer to that question, if you have the Essentials, do you get all these different camera bodies? I think you do, but I'm not sure. But I love this because you can... You have all these different camera bodies that you can emulate. You can make your camera look like these different ca camera bodies. And I went through some of these and I found that Leica M looked really cool. So I chose that one. Okay. So right now I'm on camera body, but here's where the film pack comes in. Color positive film, color negative film, black and white film, color process film. I'm going to click on color positive film. And now it says Agfa Precisa 100. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But that's what that film would look like. And if I click on this drop down here, look at all these different uh, films I have. And this will emulate these films very precisely. So let me go ahead and zoom into 100% so you can actually see the actual grain patterns of that particular film. Now you'll notice grain is turned on, like I said earlier, and it's set to the current profile of this film. And you have different things. You can adjust the intensity of the grain. I have it set for auto 24 by 36, but you could set it for a medium format or a large format, but I'm just going to use the auto 24 by 36. You can also adjust it uh, to the size of the current crop. Okay, and you can add more grain by pulling the intensity up as well. And you can adjust the size manually or click on the uh, format drop down and choose the auto settings. But we can make the intensity, we can make this grain like really pop by pulling that up. Or if I double click it, it'll set it back to 100. So you can readjust that intensity however you like it. I generally use the 100% and the format auto 24 by 36. Let me go ahead and zoom into 200% so you can really see that beautiful grain. Look at that grain. Now that is grain that that particular film would give you if you shot it with an actual film. But look at that. I mean, I love that grain. It is, it's beauty to me. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you love grain? Do you hate grain? Now, I hate digital noise, but I love film grains. I think film grains are beautiful. Let's go back to full screen. I'm just going to click this little icon right here and send us back to full screen. Now, I want to point something out very important here. Whenever you're working with the DNG file, now remember I told you deep prime noise reduction does not get added to the image till you export it. And I generally export my images as a TIFF file. So right now we're looking at an actual DNG. So the grain that we're seeing here is actually a mixture of the film grain, along with the digital noise. It's just using the basic HQ high quality noise, noise reduction. So there still will be some digital noise in this image here. If you don't want to see any uh, digital noise in your image, I would recommend that you would export your image as a TIFF and then the deep prime will remove all noise. And then you only see the actual film grain emulation minus the actual digital noise. Now let's explore some of the different uh, films we have inside of here. Now remember we're in the uh, color positive film group as opposed to the color negative of the black and white or the cross process. So we're in color positive and the rendering right now is Agfa Precisa 100. Again, I'm saying that wrong probably, but we have all these different uh, film emulations. So let's just click on some of these. But it's a simple matter of just clicking on these and seeing the effect. And when you come to one that you like, you go ahead and you pick that one. Okay, so these are some of the color films. Not going to go through every one of them, but let's go down to say like the Polaroid Polychrome, and you can see there's that. Let me zoom into 100% so you can really see that, see that that grain with the lines going through there. That's what that Polychrome would look like. Okay, so pretty cool stuff. Let me zoom back out and let's try a few more inside of the color positive. How about the uh, Kodachrome 64, and how about? uh kodachrome 200 okay and look at that grain pattern in there pretty cool stuff and again if you don't want the grain just shut the grain off or you can turn it back on i love it but that's up to you now let's check out some color negative films and here's adox color implosion and by the way if you think the effect is kind of cool but too strong you can take the intensity and pull the intensity back or you can add more intensity. Think of this as like an opacity slider, but the, it defaults at 100 or say like 100%, okay? So that's Ag for Implosion. Here's Ag for Ultra Color 100. And again, I'm just showing you how this all works inside of Photolab 4. Here's Fuji Pro 400. And let's try uh, Kodak Elite 
200 and I really like this one so I'm going to leave it right here now remember you can come up here to compare and click this and hold it down left click it with your mouse you can see the original and then you can come back to the film emulation here okay and I just noticed all this time that I've been working from my master file, which is totally fine. But remember, I started out and I made two virtual copies because I told you I was going to do one in a color film emulation and one in a black and white. Oh, well, I made my color film emulation on my original master. No big deal. I can always reset it or go back in the history here to where I left off. So that's not a problem, okay. So now let's go to virtual copy one, and now we're gonna start working with the uh, black and white emulations. So let's go up to the DxO Film Pack group, and right now I'm on camera body. Let's change that to uh, black and white film, and it starts us off with this one called Adox CHS 102. I'm gonna turn on my grain here, and it's set to the current color profile, which is what I want. And auto for the format, 24 by 36. And there is that beautiful grain. Now, if you don't want that grain, like I said, you feel free. You can just go ahead and shut it off. But I really enjoy it. In that video that I made a couple days ago on Film Pack 5, the standalone app, I showed you all the different things that you could do to adjust your image. And that was filters and the channel mixer the creative vignetting, the blur, the frame, the texture, the light leak. So go back to that video and you can watch that because I show you how those different things work, most of them anyway. But today I really wanted to show you how you can access all this stuff right here from Film Pack. So let me just show you one, for instance. Uh, let's go to blur. Let's click on uh, blur and let's uh, do a vignette blur. So I'm just going to crank up the intensity and blur the edges. But notice the film grain stays intact. We blur the edges, but the film grain stays intact. So all the settings are just like in uh, Film Pack, the standalone app, the transition round, and all this stuff. Okay. And uh, just to show you another one, like even the frames and everything are in here. So you can go ahead and click on and add a frame to your image if you'd like to. Now that's for a colored image. You wouldn't want to use that one. Let's use like a dark room too here. So you can add frames, you can do whatever you want. I just wanted to point that out. So I'm not going to waste your time on these different things here, except let me show you texture. I'll just turn texture on. Like there's crease paper and you can adjust the intensity here and so on and so forth. But you have all these different textures and they're really cool textures to simulate uh, film looks. Okay, so pretty cool stuff. So let me shut that down. And now back on to going through and sampling some of the black and white uh, different films. Now, I'll just start clicking through these. The only thing you don't get in uh, Photolab 4 when you purchase Film Pack 5 is the descriptions of the different films. You will see that when you're using the standalone app, but you won't see that in uh, the actual Photolab 4 version. But let me go ahead and click on through and we'll look at some of these different films. And the other thing I really want to say as I'm clicking through here is the black and white um, film conversions are amazing in here. And again, so are the color emulations. And also, you also get the designer uh, presets as well, but they'll, they're found under presets. They're not found under Film Pack here. You'll find those under the presets. And Film Pack also works in the Essential Edition. I'm going to show you one of my favorite films, which is uh, Kodak Tri-X. I used to use this back in the day. I used to process my own images years and years and years ago, my black and whites. And I started to get into color as well, which is really cool. Oh, and one other thing I want to show you when you're working with films, the channel mixer is very important because this channel mixer, you could come in here and like if we're on right here, if I move the slider to the right, anything that's red, see like under this pedal here, anything that's red will get lighter or darker depending on which way you go. So Channel mixer is very important when you're working with black and white films, by the way. And I, I believe I mentioned that in my prior video as well. So we can adjust the different uh, colors here. Yellow is going to really affect this. Yeah, see that. So you have these other adjustments that you can work with in here. So I'm going to shut that off for now. But let's just go through a couple more of these black and white films. Let's try a Polaroid film here. And now remember, you also have this intensity slider again. You can pull it up, make it more intense or you can pull it back and make it less intense. And if you wanted to, you can also, with the grain, you could uh, change the grain. Just because this is Polaroid film, you can say, um, 
I want to make it into uh, the ADOX film grain. So you don't have to use like the current film grain. You could change it, okay, to whatever you want, which is really cool. Let me go back to the current color profile. Almost couldn't find that there for a second. Sometimes when you're making a, making a video, your mind goes to mush, okay? But keep it on color profile, current color profile, if you wanted to maintain the grain for that particular film that you're looking at. Okay, and let's do one more. I don't think I showed you the Fuji Neopan Across. Okay, so there's that one. Well, there it is. You can work with Film Pack inside of Photolab 4, which I think is really great. I like to work with it in the standalone app because like I said, I really love the descriptions about the different types of films. I love that stuff, but I love working with it inside of Photolab 4 as well. But you can work with black and white. You can work with color like that one, or you can work with the uh, designer presets right up here in presets here. And you got all these different presets like the DxO Film Pack Designer Black and White and the color. Okay, so you got that under presets as well. There it is, uh, Film Pack in Photo Lab 4. I hope you enjoyed this one today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, stay safe and happy editing.